Well, good morning, everybody. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day the Lord has made. Let's stand and rejoice in it today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this day, for your goodness, your mercy, and your love, God. We're so happy to be in this house, to be in this place of worship with you today, with others, Lord, this morning. Let our praises arise to you like a sweet, sweet aroma. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. You are welcome here. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. All right, let's see those clapping hands. Do that again, Brooke. All right, y'all get your clapping hands ready today to praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Once like a bird in prison, I dwelt no freedom from my sorrow I fell. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, He set me free. He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm going down, my Jesus to me, and glory to God, He set me free. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. Glory to God, I'm homeward bound. Yes, He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm fully bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, He set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that you found. Not of this world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying through. Glory to God, I'm going through. Yes, He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to be. Glory to God, He set me free. And look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, He touched my mind. He saved me, and it was just in time. Oh, am I gonna praise His name? He say it's just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, look what the Lord has done. And look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. For He healed my body, He touched my mind. He saved me, and it was just in time. Oh, am I going to praise His name? He say it's just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me, and I'm glory bound by Jesus to sing. Glory to God, He set me free. He set me free, yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me, and I'm glory bound by Jesus to sing. Glory to God, He set me free. Amen, amen. Can you catch your breath now? Woo. Yeah. Are you glad he set you free today? Yeah. Oh, come on. You knew better than that. Are you glad he set you free today? Yeah. Amen, amen. It makes a happy day to know that he has set us free. Yeah, thank you. Greatest day in history. Defeated, you have rescued me, singing out, Jesus is alive. Empty cross, empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day, shouting out, Jesus is alive. He's alive, singing, oh, happy day, happy day, you walk my sins away, oh, happy day, happy day. Never be the same, oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away, oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. When I stand in that place, 
calling on the name of the Lord forever we are changed you do you know that today do you believe that today man it changes it changes everything about you when we surrender to God and so here this morning we're going to do that we're going to surrender fully to God as we enter a little bit further into worship would you just surrender your hearts right now would you surrender your spirit right now say Lord I'm here for you I'm here to worship you today Lord I'm here to speak life into others i'm here to receive life from you lord i'm here to have what you want from me today i come today because i love you lord and i need you lord before i spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so Before I spoke the word. Before I spoke the word, you were saying you hold me. Yes, Lord. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took the breath, you breathed your life. Feel your love for 
Stanley won't light up Not me won't climb up Coming back to me No one won't get down Why you won't tear down Coming back to me Come on, do you believe it today? No doubt you won't light up Not me won't climb up Coming back to me today, Lord, let our spirits be overwhelmed in knowing that you are here in our presence, God. It is being made known today, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for loving on us today, for giving us your presence today. Hallelujah.
chapter 10 start verse 23 it says let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who who is promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting the meeting together as the habit is of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near if you look around at the world right now, you see that day drawing near. And coming together is, is about more than coming and singing our worship songs. It's, it's about more than coming together and, and hearing the preaching. 
or giving in, in the tithe and offering or, or volunteering in classes or anything like that. But it's, it, it, a lot of it is about the fellowship that we have one with another. It's about lifting up each other up and encouraging one another into good works, into good things. It's being there for a brother when he's hurt. It's being there for those that, that are financially uh, destitute in this time. It's being there for those that, are, that have lost a loved one and, and are just in the grieving process. It's about seeing your face and, and knowing that and seeing that person week after week. You know that you have that bond with that person through Jesus Christ and it lifts your spirit when you see them out in, in, in town or away from this building. Coming together is, a, is about more than this service. Coming together is about more than just being here. Let's encourage one another to good works. Let's encourage one another. Let's lift one another up in this time. Let's be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but in my mind, my, the first service back in the building, there, there are things that in your mind you're going, man, I wonder, I wonder how it's going. I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder if Brother Ronnie's going to go crazy on the drums back here and go off on a solo or something. Or, you know, I wonder if we're going to if we're going to see the the house full or or if we're going to see it just half full or you know maybe maybe a lot of us are still watching from home right now and and you, and you're still worried about coming and being around people and that's okay. I know that my expectations don't matter. As long as God gets to do what he wants to, wants to do. As long as God's agenda is met during this time. I want you to just take a moment right now. Just, just close your eyes. Lift your hands in worship. Whatever you're comfortable with right now. And let's just take a moment and thank God for what he's done in our life. Thank God for being here during this time. Allowing us to come back together. God, I thank you. God, for being in your house this morning. God, we take for granted so many simple things, God, but when they're taken away, God, we're reminded just how important they are, God. The importance of being together, God. Lord, to have that fellowship, to lift one another up, to be there for my brother and sister, God. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity. God, I thank you for the chance, God, to lift your name up in your house again, God. Lord, I thank you, God, for the move of your spirit, God, as you begin to pour out on each heart, God. And as the song said, God, the atmosphere is changing. God, it's changing because of your spirit. It's changing because of you, God. Lord, change my heart. Change my mind, God. Lord, help me, God, to, to, to com conform to you, God, to your spirit, to your will this morning. Lord, and we give you all the praise, God. We give you all the honor and glory right now. God, we lift you up and we worship you, God. Come on. Yeah. 
we just ask you to surround us, God, that your, your spirit, God, would begin to move on each heart and mind this morning, God. Lord, that there would be a change that is only, only explainable by your spirit, God. Lord, we might not understand it, God, but we know that your spirit is moving and forming and changing us in ways that will benefit the kingdom of God right now. God, I thank you for that. And we lift up your holy name, Jesus. And we said amen. Church, make sure you high five, air high five. Amen. Five amen. people before you sit down. Air high five, Josh. <laughs> Who would have thought that'd be the new norm? <laughs> Air high fives. <laughs> it ain't norm, I promise you, it ain't norm. Well, we just got just a few announcements this morning. Uh, we want to make sure that you join us online for online prayer tomorrow at 12. Uh, and then also tomorrow in the afternoon or evening time, uh, depending on the announcement, the governor is going to be announcing the next phase of the reopenings and things like that. So there will, will be a pastor's update tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening, one of the two. Uh, we'll be posting that on Facebook as well. And then also Wednesday nights. You can come on Wednesday nights. Uh, we don't have uh, a deal going on right now for our kids. We're holding off on that right now until we hear the next phase of the reopenings. Uh, but we do have youth and adult services on Wednesday nights, so you can make sure and join us here at 7 o'clock, or you can watch online. Uh, as has become the custom. I'm not going to call it normal again. Brother Garland got mad at me just now. So I'm not going to call that normal. It's not the norm, brother. It's not the norm. So with that, we're going to have Brother Garland come up, and he's going to do our tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> I'd rather be here than the best hospital in town. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I think that I'm supposed to just tell you that we're not going to uh, actually receive the tithing offering. We're going to have a uh, basket available for you on your way out. So just um, hold on to that till after the service is over. But I'm going to ask the Lord to bless your tithing offering this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. Lord, we're so unworthy of your love, but yet you give your love unconditionally. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity we have, Lord, to return unto you a portion, Lord, of these fruits and, and blessings that you've brought into our lives. Lord, we ask your blessing upon the tithe and offerings, Lord, today, and that would you bless it, multiply it, Lord, that it meets the need of this church family. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it, and all of God's people said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap today. Come on. You got it in you. You're back at church. You're back at church. Come on. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap today. I'm in church. Well, we're glad to have you here today. We're glad to have them online today, worshiping with us online. But I'm glad to have you. It's so much better to see you face to face in our, our sanctuary. Now, last Sunday, Mother's Day, we were there outside beautiful day i got a little sun on my skin i was a little red when i left but we had a wonderful time in the lord's presence and you know this thing here that we're going through remind yourself is temporary tomorrow the governor gets on and he makes some announcements he does some things but let me just tell you god's already in control god's already working this thing out look at where you're at today don't live in fear we've talked about that praise the lord through this storm that we're in give god the glory for these things because let me tell you something this little storm we're in has changed your life this little storm we're in has changed everything about you because you don't do things the way you used to do things you may have to sit two chairs between you today every other row but you're in the house of the Lord and you're worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are in His presence. You are there in this place today and there's nothing that can change that because let me tell you what, where you are, His presence is. Amen. Oh man, come on, y'all got to do better than that because on Facebook y'all blow me up. Amen, come on, Pastor Priest, let's go. You're all good. So uh, now then, you're all trapped. You all have to be my amens. You can't be quiet. You got to be in there. You got to be loud. You got to be proud. Well, I want to bring you a message this morning that is simply titled, Shattering Praise. 
shattering praise. And what I'm talking about is not your praise being shattered, but rather what your praise does. You know, there's lots of things in our life that can shatter us. Anybody agree with that? There's things in our life that will just destroy us, shatter us, tear us apart. But let me tell you, your praise shatters things. Your praise destroys things. Your praise opens the doors, the windows of heaven. Your praise hits the throne room of God. Your praise releases the anointing on your life. Your praise puts you in the place of the Almighty God. And your praise enables you to be the child of God that you are. But if you're not praising, you ain't walking, and you aren't receiving, and let me tell you what you're doing. You're whining. You're whining. So the Word of God tells us to praise Him in our storms. Amen? Come on, somebody. Praise Him in our storms. Have you been praising God for the storm we're in? Have you? Because all I've heard is a bunch of people say, man, this is stupid. Man, I wish this wasn't happening. God, this is so dumb. Why do we go through this? When will you get a hold of our officials? Let me tell you, praise God for the storm it's in because it's turning people back to the Bible. It's turning people back to a walk with God. It's turning people back to a prayer life. And prayer and praise is where it's at. It's where God designed you and me to dwell in His Spirit, in His presence, in that prayer, and that praise does something for us. So shattering praise this morning you know is there anything in your life that you can think of right now that shattered you of course there is there's been things in your life that shattered you that's torn you apart that's torn you down and and if you remember it's not like humpty dumpty you don't get to go around and pick up all the pieces and and put you back together and glue you back together and make yourself whole again there's something about when you're shattered by the things of this world it seems like a piece of you is gone but here's the thing when jesus comes in when you allow jesus to come into your storm and you praise him in the storm he picks up all the pieces and you're not a bunch of cracks and you're not taped together and you're not glued together you again are perfectly made in his image and his likeness and he heals the broken hearted and he takes the stripes that he bore for you and he heals you and so in our praise comes healing healing you know we're going to get in the word here in just a moment in Philippians 4 you can go ahead and turn in the Bible there to Philippians 4 today. That's going to be our main set of verses. But I want to read to you this morning what Paul says to the church of Philippi in, in, in chapter 3. You know, let me ask this question though. How do you stay true to the Lord? How do you stay true to Him? In our marriages, we stay true to our spouse by keeping our eyes fixed on them and not others we're not out shopping for another wife or another husband we're not out doing things that would say I, i'm free instead we're 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 tied to that person and in your in your marriage to god we stay true to the lord by staying close to him and here's what it says in philippians 3 and 20 but we are citizens of heaven where the lord jesus christ lives And we are eagerly awaiting for Him to return as our Savior. He will take these weak, mortal bodies of ours and change them into glorious bodies like His own, using the same mighty power that He will use to conquer everything, everywhere. He's pulling us to Him. He's drawing us to Him. And it says right here, we're not a citizen of this earth. We're not a citizen of Lufkin, Texas. We're not a citizen of Angelina County. But where are we? We're a citizen of... Heaven. We're a citizen of the Lord's. And it tells us right here that He's going to take our weak and our mortal bodies and He's going to change them into glorious bodies using the same mighty power and He will conquer everything everywhere. So that tells you this morning that when we praise God, when we draw close to Him, He's conquering everything. He's shattering everything. And this morning, your praise, your pushing into God will shatter the things that are around you that are holding you down. It will shatter the effects of the coronavirus many at home today are staying home because they're saying i'm not quite ready and that's okay but let me tell you we don't have to live in a spirit of fear we have a sound mind we have a god who's big enough we have a god who's still in control and when we praise him he protects us and he shatters the thing that tries to destroy us 
Look at Philippians 4 now. Go to verse 4. I love this chapter. As Paul writes to this Philippian group of people, some people call this, some scholars call this, this specific book the Epistle of Joy. The Epistle of Joy. This is the day the Lord has made, so I will what? Rejoice in it. What's in that word, rejoice? Joy. And in this book right here, this word joy or rejoice appears 16 different times. Paul was trying to get something through to them, and I believe God's trying to get something across to you. How many of you this morning, if you're honest with yourself, don't raise your hand or embarrass yourself, but would say, I might have came with a bad attitude. I might have got up this morning and I didn't have the joy of the Lord I was being taken from instead of receiving. Look here what he says in verse 4. Always be full of joy in the Lord. If anything we could do right now, we could stop in this passage right here in this portion of this scripture and just live on this. Always be full of joy in the Lord. So if you want to be full of joy, what do you got to be? In the Lord. In the Lord. Not in the moment. Not in the situation. Not in the trial. Not in the change. Not in all the things that are tearing you apart or stretching you. But be in the Lord. The Lord your God sustains. He heals. He redeems. He restores. Go on and read with me. Always. Be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Not tell your friend. Not tell your mama, not tell your auntie, your granny, or whoever else. Not go cry on someone else's shoulder. Tell the Lord what you need. Let the Lord be the source. Let the Lord be the one who stays with you, who guides you, who gives you more. Look at this. If you do this, you will experience God's peace. In this short bit of passage, we're already seeing the recipe for God changing your life and giving you more than you've ever dreamed of. For Him changing things through your praise, it tells us right here, if you do these things, if you do what you need to do and follow what the Lord says, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. Come on, somebody. Far more wonderful than what the human mind can understand. So what you're understanding right now, what you've been understanding, whether it's the coronavirus, whether it's a sickness in your family, whether it's been a death, whether it's a trial, whether it's a situation that's tough, if you look at the Word of God right here, it says that God's peace, which is more wonderful than the human mind can understand, will be given to you. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you Live in Christ Jesus. It's a simple, simple thing. So it should be. As you live in Christ Jesus. As you live in Christ Jesus. Think about that for a moment. Have you been living in Jesus? Are you living in Jesus now? Are you living in a moment, in a situation, in a trial, or a tribulation? How many of you know it's easy to get caught up in the where we are, the who, the, the where, and all that, the now. But it's so hard to get back to the presence of God when we've allowed all those things to build up in our lives. But he tells us if we're always full of joy in the Lord, that we don't have to worry about anything. But he tells us to pray. In this letter that's written about joy, Paul writes it from the prison cell. He's in shackles. He's sitting in a prison cell in the worst of worst places. He can't even get out of his room. He don't get any time out like the other inmates. He's in there. He's got guards watching the door. He's locked down. They're held tight. Yet he writes a letter. He pens a letter here to the church of Philippi to them. And all throughout it, remember 16 times, he tells them, rejoice. So if you were to write it down, 
In, in chapter 1, verse 18, he says, I will rejoice. And, and I'm not going to give you all 16, but listen. In, in chapter 2, verse 17, he says, I rejoice and I share with my joy with you all. I share my joy. In, in, in verse 18, he says, I urge you, rejoice in the same way. Chapter 3, verse 1, finally, brethren, rejoice in the Lord. And we just read it right here in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. So even locked up, even bound up in that place, Paul says, rejoice. What he's showing us, and I believe what what Paul gives us is this great attribute that you and I both can possess. And it's this, look for the hidden blessings in your trials. Look for the hidden blessing. We can always see the thing that's in front of us. But what's the old statement? We can't see the forest for the tree. Look past the tree. Look around the tree. Look over the tree. But look, there is a forest that awaits you. There's a blessing that's out there that's hidden. Like a broken record, Paul hammers this home to this Philippian people. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And the word actually means rejoy. In other words, you had it, but you got to get it again. Rejoy. You had it. Get it again. If you got anything that's electronic today, most of them have a what? Reset button. You got a reset button and it's called praise. Every time you praise the Lord, every time you get in your prayer closet, every time you seek the Lord, you hit a reset button and all of a sudden you have joy. The Bible tells us it's what? Joy unspeakable and full of glory it's not just unspeakable but it's full of his glory not your glory so we want the joy we want god's blessings and all these things we want god to do mighty things in our life you see when we rejoice the joy we've lost becomes restored but it doesn't just restore that It restores our feeble faith so that we can rise again. When we rejoice, God rebuilds not just our joy, but He rebuilds our faith. He helps us to receive His fullness in everything then and thereof. In Philippi, Paul and Silas, again, locked up in stocks in there, and they were placed in this uh, this, uh, prison, and they were shackled up. But what did they do? They began to rejoice. It says that they sang, didn't it? And when they sang, what happened? The chains broke. An earthquake come about. They were set free. And that's just it. In our praise, it shatters everything. It has the physical ability to shatter chains and to shatter walls and to set the captive free. So if you're not praising God, you can't complain to God, where are you at, Lord? Instead, praise Him in the storm. Praise Him in the storm. How many of you ever heard that before? Oh, yeah. You're going through something, and somebody says, Oh, honey, oh, baby, just, just praise Him in the storm. It's going to be all right. You have a sweet grandma or a sweet friend. Just praise Him in the storm. It's going to be all right. And you just want to look at them and say, I'll snap your little neck off if you say that to me again. Because I don't want to praise Him right now. I want to wallow in my pain, and I want to wallow in all these things, and I don't want to praise Him right now. So, so don't tell me praise Him in my storm. But we got to praise Him in our storm. It really works. Praise has the ability, folks, to shatter all doubt, all fears, all, all things. Praise has that ability to do those things. And so I'm going to share a few things that praise has the ability to do and what praise will do and how your praise can become shattering praise. Because I'm not talking about just, Oh, Lord, you're so good to me. Oh, God, I love you. Come on, folks. You know what I'm talking about where you've been in your bedroom And you've been crying and you've been seeking the Lord and then all of a sudden the prayers are answered and all of a sudden out of your belly flows streams of living water and you begin to rise up in the joy of the Lord and the Spirit comes on you and you begin to speak in the Lord and then there's joy unspeakable and it's full of glory and you begin to praise Him. That's the kind of praise that shatters things and if you hadn't got to that place yet you got to learn how to move into that place and that means you got to release who you are and right here in the Scriptures it tells you always 
always, always be full of the joy of the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Let every uh, one that sees you and are considering all you do, remember the Lord's coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Come on, we got the recipe right here to praise Him through our storms and to shatter the very foothold of the enemy that He has on us. So here's what praise shatters. Number one, praise shatters despair. Despair. Praise will shatter your despair. You ever been in despair? You ever felt like there's no way out, there's no hope, there's nothing? I, I'm not going to make it out of this, Lord. I, I, I just don't see victory in this. I don't see anything in this. I'm falling to the wayside, God. I'm nothing without you. We've all been there. Maybe you're there today. Maybe you're struggling with that thing today. But look at this. Paul was under arrest. Paul was in a prison cell. He couldn't leave. He was tangled up and he wrote, I will rejoice. I know that this will change. Why? Because he loves us. Look at Philippians chapter 1. I want you to read it right here. Philippians 1 and go to verse 18. I want you to see what he's writing because you need to get a hold of this. Whether or not their motives are pure, the fact remains that the message about Christ is being preached. So I rejoice and I continue to rejoice for I know that as you pray for me and as the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will all turn out for my deliverance. This will all turn out for my deliverance. I'll be set free of this. You know, we got to know that God's working behind the scenes no matter where you're at and what it looks like and where you've been and what's going on. Know that God's there. He hasn't left you. He hasn't run away from you. God is right where you're at. In the midst of your despair, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your hurting, God is right there with you. He does not leave you. He does not forsake you. He cares about you. And He shatters despair when we praise Him. You see, the clouds over your head may be dark right now. They may have been dark in your past, but praise lifts you above the clouds so that you can see the sun again. You know, I like flying. And when you're flying, there's that time that you might go through a storm. You know what I'm talking about? You might go through a storm and then it's all dark. But the pilot says, I don't want to ride in these storms. I don't want to be in these things. And he either gets above it. Or he gets below it. He gets to the clear place. we got to get above our storms or below our storms. we got to get away from our storms so that we can have clarity in our lives. Because despair is no place to live. You don't want to live in the pit of despair. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. You're being awful quiet. You don't want to live in the pit of despair in your life. I read uh, an article this week about... Uh, soldiers who who fought in the war and one really stood out to me and I want to share this with you this morning because in our despair it can change our mindset and in our normal lives just following the Lord our mindset can be changed but this was written by a confederate soldier okay and this is what he wrote he said I asked God for strength that I might achieve and he goes on to list these things and he finishes it with this I was made weak that I might learn to humbly obey. I asked so I could achieve, but I was made weak so I'd obey. I asked for health that I might do greater things, and I was given infirmity that I might do better things. He said, I asked for riches that I might be happy, and I was given poverty that I might be wise. He goes on to say two other things. I, was asked, I asked for power that I might have the praise of men, but I was given the weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. Even in the storm, you flip the script, you look at this, and you see God's hand and His handiwork in your life and Him working in you, and He's working through these things. So let me just encourage you this morning. Don't let this whole thing with the coronavirus get you down. Don't let this whole thing wear you out and make you weak and make you worn, and don't let it put you in the pit of despair. God takes what does not look good, and He turns it around for those, for the good of those that love Him and call on His name. Why? Because He loves you. 
And when we praise Him, we tell Him how much we love Him. And the more we love on Him, the more we see His love. His love is infinite. We don't have to earn His love. It's already there. But when we're praising Him, His love becomes evident. And it shatters the storms that are in our life. The last statement he said was this. I got nothing I ask for, but everything I had hoped for. Don't look in this situation and say, God, I've been asking you to do this. I've been asking you to do that. I've been asking you to do all these things. And and, and look at it like God's not answering. God's moving. God's answering. God's working things out. In the end, it's going to be everything you hope for. Look today. Eight weeks ago, you weren't here. Eight weeks ago, we were home. We were doing what we could do to be a biblical Christian and follow the guidelines of the Lord, yet follow the guidelines of the the law that we live under here on this earth. And and as a pastor trying to wade through these things, listen to all these things, make these choices, probably one of the hardest points in my life ever. And even today, trying to figure out how we go forward, how we do these things the right way can be a a place that's hard and can be a place of despair. But let me tell you what, God picks you up out of the miry clay. He sets your feet upon the rock to stay. Why? Because He cares about you when we praise Him, we move into that place where we have an intimate relationship with Him and He shatters the things that have held us back. Amen. Second thing praise shatters is this. It shatters negativity. Praise shatters negativity. Don't look at your husbands, ladies. Don't look at your husbands. If they've been negative, they've been negative, they'll get over it. They'll, they'll move through it. God says, come on and just praise me. And when we praise Him in the storm, praise shatters the negativity. You know, we've been complaining about our situation. Some of you were like, I can't believe this. I am so sick and tired of this. Will they ever let the hairdresser open back up? My hair looks like a mop that hadn't been washed in weeks. Don't come after me later. I got a knife. (laughs) And when that lady or that man, your hairdresser, says, I'm taking appointments, it was waiting only, boys. It's like, can I get in? Yep, two weeks from now. What? Let me call somebody else. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's negativity that floats around in our life. But let me tell you something. If we talk trash, if we talk negative, if we don't talk in the positive, we don't affirm what God is doing, before long you're going to be stuck in the rut of negativity. Everything out of your mouth will flow negative. Everything about your actions will become negative and you will no longer be what the scriptures say where it says let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Come on somebody. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all of the things that you do. Pray about it. Tell God what you need. We're to do all things without grumbling and without disputing them. Paul tells them that in the second chapter of Philippians around verse 14. Do all things without griping, complaining, without grumbling. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. My kids, I tell them to do something. I can hear them grumble under their voice, and you know what it does. Boy, it just boils my blood. And I'm here to tell you that it boils the blood of God to have a son and a daughter that he loves look at him and grumble and complain when everything he gives us is good, perfect, and pleasing. He loves you. He desires your praise. And your praise breaks the negativity off of your life. Your praise shatters those things. He knew that the children of Israel, Paul knew this thing, and we're barred and we're uh, banned from the promised land as you read about because why? They grumble. So he's like, I ain't grumbling about this. I'm going to praise God in the midst of this situation while I'm locked up. And so sometimes we're where we are because of our own choices. Sometimes we're where we are because of other choices. But it doesn't matter. You have to praise Him because His mercies are what? New every day. He shatters the negativity in our life. We have to thank God even when we've been shipwrecked, even when we've been beat, even when we've been through the tough things in our life. You know, Paul was shipwrecked. He was beat. He went through riots. He went through starvation. He had death threats. He had all these things coming against him. And he shattered the negativity by praising God. So you break these things, whether it's your own self being negative or others being negative, by praising God in the midst of this storm. Sometimes these things come, but Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say, 
Come on, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, come on, will you rejoice today? When you leave here, are you going to rejoice? Or is somebody going to grumble because we say, all right, back row, you're dismissed. Next to back row, you're dismissed. And you're down here on the front, and you're ready to go eat some pot roast, or you're ready to go eat some fajitas, and you're down here waiting on everybody else to go out. Remember, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I said, rejoice. Rejoice even in the small things. Fight back the negativity that's on your life that that comes against you. Another thing that praise shatters is is huge. You ready for this one? This one, I think, creeps into America more than anywhere else, especially right now. Praise shatters doubt. Praise shatters doubt. You had doubt when you came today. You had doubt in your heart and in your mind. Am I going to have to wear a mask? You were doubting. Are others going to wear a mask? You were doubting. Is there going to be adequate, proper hygiene there? You were doubting. Is there going to be anybody that shows up? Am I going to be the only one today? You were doubting. You were wondering what it was going to look like. And you were doubting things. And doubt destroys faith, folks. When we stop praising, when we stop praising God, doubt creeps in. We get stuck in the mud. We get stuck in the mire. We get stuck in our own problems. And all we can see is the here and the now. Anybody ever been stuck like in a a vehicle or a tractor or an SUV, something like that? You got stuck? Oh, yeah. The only thing you see is the fact that you're stuck. Let me tell you something. Even though you're stuck, God still provides a way out. Even if you're stuck physically in the mud, God provides a way out. I remember one time I got stuck. Now, if you have a diesel pickup, common sense should tell you it's extra heavy. Don't go through the mud. But I did as a young man. I was dumb. But I got stuck. And instead of stopping, thinking, what am I going to do? You all know what I did. Put it in reverse. Put it in forward. Till I dug myself down to the frame. I was stuck. I had a horse trailer behind me. I had three horses in the horse trailer. And I'm sitting there fighting mad that I am stuck. I doubted that that truck would get out, but I tried it anyway. And I doubted I was ever going to get out. I thought my dad's going to kill me when I have to tell him where we're at and we have to pay some farmer to come down here with his big tractor and try and lift me up and I probably ripped the rear end out as we're getting out of this hole. I was doubting everything at that moment. But then, let me just tell you, as a 16-year-old young man who'd been doubting, this still small voice spoke to me. And it was like that aha moment. You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, really? I'm an idiot. And he says, you have horses in your trailer, son. You have a brother sitting next to you. Hook him up. So we hooked up ropes to the horses. And they got on them horses. And they went to pull it. And I put her in granny. And we crawled right out of that hole. We got unstuck. Praise shatters doubt. And let me tell you, I was praising the Lord. And I'm like, keep the horses going. Because I went down a mud road. I shouldn't have been down until we got off the mud road. Praise shatters doubt. You don't have to doubt anymore when you're getting pulled out. When God's towing you out, when God's taking you out, you don't have to doubt Him anymore. You know God is good. But the thing is, when we get into doubt, we forget how good God is. So you see, something supernatural happens when you rejoice, as Paul talks about, when you rejoice in the Lord. Something supernatural happens. Something supernatural happened here as they were praising the Lord. As we read about in this book, in the Philippians, the walls begin to shake. The shackles broke off. They were delivered. Praise shattered this thing. And doubt was gone. And everybody who doubted them sitting there praising God and singing to the Lord no longer had doubt, but they had faith because they were set free and they were rescued. So how long is it going to take for you to be set free and not live in doubt? How long? Not very long if you'll praise Him. Paul tells us in verse 13 there, Philippians chapter 4, you all know it. Come on, somebody say it. Philippians 4, 13. I can do what? All things through Christ 
who strengthens me. I can shatter doubt. I can shatter negativity. I can shatter all these things that get a hold of my life. When you praise God, and you begin to praise Him. He shatters things and He makes you strong. It's this way I like to look at it. When you're really praising God and when you're really seeking the Lord, it's like, well, if you're old enough, you'll remember. It's like Clark Kent. Close the door. Open it out. Superman. When you praise God, you come out like Superman. You're jacked up, you're buff, you're fast, you can do anything, you're strong, you can make it all through. You can do everything you want to do. Praise shatters doubt. I want to tell you a story about praise shattering doubt. There was a man named Mr. Jones, Mr. Ronald Jones. And this pastor got the phone call late one night. Pastor Jones, Pastor Jones, can you please come to the hospital? And he says, who is this? He says, this is Mr. Jones. What a coincidence. Pastor Jones, my son has been bit by a rattlesnake. He is about to die. They've given him all the anti-venom that he can take. Now it's up to God. Can you come to the hospital? So the pastor quickly gets up and he gets dressed and he comes in. He says, can you pray for my son, Pastor? Sure, I can pray. Sure, I can pray. Let's pray right now. So the pastor starts praying, and, and of course he's praying, Lord, heal this body. Lord, make this anti-venom work. Lord, take all these things away. I mean, just a huge prayer. And then in the middle of this prayer, almost towards the end, he, he's praying, and he says, Dear Lord, now we come to you on behalf uh, of Mr. Jones, and we thank you, Lord, and we want to praise your name right now for sending this rattlesnake to bite his son because one rattlesnake has done what I or the church has been unable to do for the last five years, and that's get Mr. Jones to praise you. It's a true story. So maybe sometime in our life we just need a little rattlesnake bite. Or maybe we just need to say, God, you're big enough. I'm going to praise you in my storm. I'm going to believe, Lord, right now that you're big enough in my storm. Last thing here this morning. Praise shatters anxiety. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. The anxiety to get out of your house. The anxiety to walk past someone. The anxiety to talk to someone. The anxiety maybe to eat at a restaurant. The anxiety of what you might bring home. All because of this virus. But some of you this morning are are anxious for many other reasons. Am I going to have a job tomorrow? What's this going to look like? How's this going to affect me? Some of you are anxious because maybe you've gotten a bad report from from the doctor. Some of you are anxious because uh, of various things in your life. But let me tell you, when you're anxious, you go to the Lord in prayer. When you're anxious, you praise God. When you're anxious, you seek the one who makes you not anxious. Because let me tell you. The Word of God is very clear that we were made in His likeness and His image. And let me tell you this, God is not anxious. He's not anxious in the fact that He's scared. He's not anxious in the fact that that He has to worry about His tomorrow. You see, God is outside of our timeline. God knows the beginning and God knows the end. God knows where we are. God knows that He's already created a heaven and an earth for us that we're going to soon someday get out of here. He knows that His Son, Jesus Christ, is coming back for the rapture of this church and those that have called on His name will be caught up and those that are dead before will be caught up and we'll all be out of this place. He knows He's not anxious. He's anxious in the fact that He wants us to be there, but He's not anxious in fear so praise when we praise god it shatters anxiety paul said for us to what hit the rejoice button hit the rejoice in in our life always be full of the joy of the lord again i say rejoice rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice hit the rejoice button look at verse seven with me one more time if you do this you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. When we rejoice, 
when we hit the reset button, we learn to live in His presence. And if we do this, we experience God's peace. How many of you want God's peace? I want it. We should all want it. We should all want to be in the peace of the Lord. You see, joy calms your anxious heart and allows you to receive the promises of God. Joy calms you down. There was a military chaplain. Many of you may have read a book he wrote. His name was Merlin, Mer, Merlin Carruthers. And he wrote this book. Maybe you've got it in your library if you like to read. It's called Prison to Praise. Merlin Carruthers, Prison to Praise. I've got a book in my office. It's beautiful. 17 million copies wrote, sent out. 53 different languages. This is a big book. One of the things that stood out to me in this book is this. He says, this is the answer, okay? This is what's breaking us through, getting us past anxiety, allowing God's uh, love to shed us, set us free and, and shed all the insecurities in our life. He says this, the very act of praise releases the power of God into a set of circumstances and enables God to change them. When we praise God, it releases His power into the circumstance and allows God to change them. You're not changing them. You're not in the business of changing these things. It's not up to you to change these things. It's up to you to surrender to God and allow God to do the things that need to be done. Allow God to change you and allow God to direct you. You see, miracles, power, and victory, all these things that we desire to see, they're all a part of what God wants to do in our lives. But until we learn to rejoice, until we learn to praise Him, we don't get to see those things because we're so caught up on what is going on that we can't see what God wants to do. And we're not releasing His power to do those things. So when you praise God, you're releasing the power of God. You're releasing the power of God to do things that only God can do. You've tried it long enough yourself. Some of you know, I've been after this a long time. I've been trying to get happy a long time. I've been trying to get over this a long time. I've been trying to do that a long time. Lord, where are you at? Lord, are you going to show up in my life? God, are you ever going to answer my prayers when all He's asked you to do is slow down, stop, wait a minute? And say, Lord, this is yours. I praise you for who you are. I praise you because you love me. And Lord, I trust you. I trust you to be the Lord over my life. And Lord, your will and your way be done. But that's the hardest thing for us to say. Lord, your will and your way be done. Not mine, but yours. Greg, if you'd come this morning. As we look in this passage one more time, I want you to read again with me the whole passage because I want this to sit on your hearts for a moment longer. It says, always be full of the joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him. Folks, these are simple instructions for us that have become the hardest thing in our life. But would you take this morning?